with uh, Kasama in support. Mendes Lopez is the captain. And then uh, Suarez, Brito Silva, Balde and Manet make up the side, coached by Basiro Kande, who is a 70-year-old former Guinea-Bissau player. Coached the side between 2003 and 2010. He's in second spell in charge of Guinea-Bissau. And an important part to play in their first match away from home in uh, the campaign of qualifying for the African Cup of Nations finals in Cameroon 2019. Mozambique will fancy themselves in front of their home supporters on a pitch that looks in a very good nick from the commentary box. And uh, they will hope Mozambique to be able to challenge for the victory. If it turns out to be a stalemate, then Guinea-Bissau and Mozambique will still be at the top of the table with four points each, depending on the result between Namibia and Zambia, which uh, both of these sides will be hoping will end in a draw and therefore leave Namibia and Zambia both on one a single point and still three points behind both of these sides in the event of a stalemate. But a victory for either one of these two sides and suddenly it'll be a different ball game altogether. One of the sides, either Mozambique or Guinea with the victory will go to the top of the table. Ahmad Hiralal from Mauritius is our match official today with Gobin and uh, Babaji from Mauritius, his two assistant referees. He's a 36-year-old official. He's only been an international referee for two years, so hasn't had that amount of good experience as far as the uh, international scene is concerned. He did referee at the CAF Champions League and also the African Cup of Nations qualification matches coming into this one. So we wait with great interest to see how Mozambique in the red and Guinea-Bissau in the yellow are going to get this encounter underway. Abel Javier 48, 45 year old former fullback. He's been with the side for uh, two years now, two seasons. Javier, and we'll be hoping that uh, his side can uh, really do something as far as qualification for the biggest competition on the African continent for national sides is concerned. There is Basir Kande, coach of Guinea Bissau. He'll know how tough it is playing away from home. There's no doubt that he will want his side to come up with the goods today. Today, particularly in Portugal, with Estrella da Madora, Benfica, Bari in Italy, Real Oviedo, PSV Eindhoven, Everton, Liverpool, he played as well for uh, one season, 2002-2003. Uh, went on loan to Galatasaray, played at Hanover. So he's been all over the place, played for Roma in Italy, Hanover 96 played at Middlesbrough between 2005 and 2007 and then ended up in LA Galaxy in the United States where he ended his career in 2008. Represented Portugal did Abel Xavier at uh, all levels in the 16, 17, 18, 20, 21 and uh, 20 times at uh, the senior national side. We're underway then in Maputo. It's Mozambique against Guinea-Bissau. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. It's not uh, quite a crucial match, but, uh, you know, if you drop points early on in a group, could find yourself in trouble towards the end of the stages of the competition, the qualifying campaign, and goal difference could play a part as far as that is concerned as well. Geraldo played an important role for Mozambique today, being pulled up by the match referee, Mr. Ahmad Hirlal, for uh, a bit of a late challenge. Yeah, not holding back at all, just a follow through, really, and the left knee clattering into the face of the Guinea Bissau player. And, uh, offers his apology does Geraldo but I think the referee is quite right to have a little word in the ear of the Mozambican player Some animation from Neville Javier as Guinea-Bissau will perpetrate their first set piece of the game and knocked away by Mozambique's Witi and in the picture is Luis. Guinea Bissau will come to play. This nothing to lose when you're away from home, really, because the expectation is from a home side to 
have a victory, but the away side, you win at home, you draw away from home, it's, it's quite often good enough. I think any Bissau will settle for that sort of situation or not when you has to wait and see. First meeting between the two sides is always an interesting one. And a bit of revenge on Geraldo. Pele, who brings him down. Interesting when players adopt the name of a, an iconic player like Pele, but 26-year-old in his third match at international stage for Guinea-Bissau, plays for Monaco. A number of the Guinea-Bissau players play in Europe, mostly in the Portuguese colonies, a couple of them in Italy, then even in Iceland for Eddie Gomes. And the fans getting quite excited about the prospect, Chaz. Mozambique will attack for the first time. Ebner with the clearance. First corner kick of the match then it will be the captain of the side, Elis Palembe, better known as Domingos. Guinea Bissau with the clearance. Domingos will have another opportunity. Nice first touch from Dominguez. Still trying to do a bit of work in there, but a good piece of defense, and that'll be a goal kick for Guinea Bissau. And no panic for the visiting side as they held out very, very nicely indeed to contain an important man in the starting lineup for Mozambique today. He's the leader of the side, Dominguez. He's a good best fit in his 78th appearance for the national side. and having scored 16 goals already, so he's a bit of a terror in front of goal, and you can see Abel Xavier with a lot of animation on the touchline. Early days, and he'd want his side to go in front as quickly as possible. Guinea-Bissau not settling for defending early on in a counter-attack football. Space uh, wide here for Ebna, and a telling clearance by Ifren. The clearance had to be made. It was a delightful ball, and I thought there might have been a bit more purpose from Abner. Guinea Bissau will have a corner. They've already had a free kick. Mozambique have had a corner as well early on. And Tony Brito is down injured. He might have just been caught on his right ankle, so a bit of support from the medical staff as far as Guinea-Bissau is concerned. Let's have a look at that play from the far side. Well, that was where he was caught just before the cross was delivered into that Mozambique penalty area. The Mumba's not taking any chances of conceding the corner kick by Ifren, but it looks like Tony Brito is back on his feet. He's going to uh, get involved in that set piece as well by the look of things. So, Kiri Bissau, near post, where's the beak will clear? Now an opportunity for Dominguez, straight down the middle of the park, they've got numbers forward here, Mozambique. Play on, says the referee, Mr. Hiralal. Good piece of defending again from Kiri Bissau. Bright start to the match from both sides. It's always a good thing as well. I imagine that either side would have been disappointed with the beginning of the encounter so far. Coach Bashiru Kande, a little bit of a prowl on the near side touch line. It's back off Balde. Seems to have a problem. Twenty 
26-year-old playing in his 17th encounter, plays in Armenia with Genzazar Kapan. It's one goal for him in international football so far, the 26-year-old defender. It looks as if the danger and the problem has been completed for Guinea-Bissau, back off Alde. Looks as if he's going to return to the fray, and I'll be happy to have him back on there as well. Offside flag up against Mozambique. Again, it's Dominguez. Having all sorts of interference at the moment, Dominguez. He really is a, a bit of a handful, is the Mozambican captain, the Mumbas. We're hoping to have more than a sting in the tail as far as this entire country is concerned. So 34 years old now, Mr. Dominguez. Still competing heavily as far as his team is concerned. As I said, 77 appearances. 16 goals. Guinea Bissau have liked that right hand side of attack, to be honest. The flick away comes from Geraldo, who's done his fair share of attacking as well. Pele. Continue with the rather brisk pace that has been continuing throughout the start of the match. Abner has been caught in the back, and the fourth official just suggesting to Abel Xavier, the 45 year old coach of Mozambique that uh, there is a demarcated area in which he needs to stay and uh, that is the instruction then coming from the fourth official. There will always be some sort of protest about those sort of things too. Another Guinea-Bissau plays down, we've seen this a few times already over the course of the match. Now just completely Without being touched, so there must have been a lingering injury that was uh, picked up in an earlier forage from the Guinea-Bissau defender, and he's going to go off. In the meantime, Kasama over towards the bench. Hasn't been the best of starts for Guinea-Bissau, to be honest. Zezinho will have the restart. Zezinho is a 25 year old in his 27th appearance. He's got two goals, plays in Slovakia with Sinica. So Zezinho goes to the back post. The header is not uh, that well orchestrated by Guinea Bissau. Still continuing to utilize that right hand side of attack. And uh, really. Which way rather easily by Mozambique. Now, if they start looking for Dominguez all of the time, it might start to become a little bit predictable for the Mumbas. And that is going to be a corner for Guinea Bissau. I'm trying to keep it in play. Zenedine and, uh, successful in that quest. So Suarez is on for Guinea Bissau. A corner kick taken. Referee spotting some pushing. Quite strict in uh, where he wants the positioning of the ball to take place. Abner looking to get back on after picking up a knock. Briefly had a look at the goalkeeper of Mozambique. Burrugo. 26-year-old. 
Some lovely skill shown then from the left-hand side of attack for Mozambique. The fans love uh, a bit of skill being shown, and there's no doubt that Mozambique possess quite a lot of flair. Talking about Garrigo, 26-year-old, in his 11th appearance for his country. He used to play at Maxi Kane and Union Songo, but now plays at Costa de Sol, does the first-choice goalkeeper for Abel Javier. Really contested match so far between the two sides. We're only 12 minutes in, nearly caught in possession. The Guinea Bissau defense. Opportunity for Rabna to try and orchestrate a bit of an escape forward by Pele. Side. It looks like a rather punching challenge from Kambala. Pele in your picture, spoken about him already, 26-year-old, only playing in his third international. Evan has had a lot of space on the left-hand side so far, trying to curl us in towards the keeper. I'll tell you what, we've been somebody on the back post, it could have been problems, Tony Brito will still collect near the corner flag. He's had some deliveries from in there with the right foot. This time he tries with the left with less success than he's had in the past. Every time Guinea Bissau push forward, you can see Evan has had a lot of space on the left hand side so far. Trying to curl us in towards the keeper. I'll tell you what, we've been somebody on the back post. It could have been problems. Tony Brito will still collect near the corner flag. He's had some deliveries from in there with the right foot. This time he tries with the left, with less success than he's had in the past. Every time Guinea-Bissau push forward, you can see the nervous energy coming through from the Mozambican coach, Abel Xavier. That's going to be a free kick as well for the visiting side. LSU Kasama. Once ball floated in there again. The referee quite strict on any sort of meaningful contact inside of that penalty area. The vehicle will be more than happy to see the ball disappear over the halfway line. Then they get a skipped in play by Kampala this time. See Dominguez in the background and coach in the foreground, all uh, offering instructions as far as uh, how the team is expected to play. Slowing the ball down, Ebner continues with his good work down the left-hand side. Just tipped away from him by Zainadine. I wonder if the players can even hear him. There's such a cacophony of noise around here, but it is another corner kick for Guinea Bissau. They've had three already, a couple of free kicks in there as well. Opportunity from the back post for the visiting side. Keeper's done well. Girugo. Too much of Jonas Mendes, the 
from the eight-year-old goalkeeper in his 27th appearance. And as I say that, there he is in his very brightly coloured orange strip with the blonde hair. Plays at uh, Portuguese club, Académico Viciu. Easy pick-up in the centre of defence for Misa. Offside against Domingas. Oh, and a collision with the keeper as well, Mendes. Mendes uh, perhaps not quite hearing the whistle and having to uh, do the safety first thing. And the 34-year-old clatters into him. Lots of experience for Dominguez. He sets off to the ball there. Now, is there any chance that the keeper can bait out of this? Well, he's in the air when contact is made. And I would go as far as to suggest that the contact was uh, orchestrated by Dominguez rather than by Mendes. As uh, Mendes receives attention, Dominguez offering his... Uh, thoughts about that situation to uh, one of the Guinea-Bissau players who probably isn't too happy with the situation. Fantastic to see how many supporters have come in to the, the Zampeto Stadium in Maputo for this encounter. An opportunity for the Mozambican side to go top of the table on their own with a victory want to lose at home, there's no doubt about that. Back on his feet then is Mendes. Plenty of delays in the first half of this encounter so far with fouls being committed and there's another quite forceful challenge coming in from Geraldo. Abner once again with some possession, nice little bit of work down the flank as well. anticipation from the supporters every time that Dominguez gets himself into possession. Better opportunity, certainly the more corners and forcefulness coming from Guinea-Bissau at the moment, and it's almost as if Mozambique have been pushed inside of their own half, forced to at times play counter-attack football. Suarez. Suarez, Suarez, a 26-year-old who plays for Mafra in Portugal. Back with Mozambique inside to Kampala. Wide again onto the left-hand side where they've looked to play. Kampala once again. Almost thought the pass to Gurugo was going to be on for a moment, but it isn't. Well, the, the home fans are not happy with the Bombers, who are seemingly playing in retreat at the moment. Looking for a bit more positive play from the Bombers. Mane in possession, the man in the picture is Ellison Kasama. And that is Luis. Again, Mozambique losing possession. Seem to have a, a pretty strong midfield at the moment, so maybe so having to go and play back. Suarez looking for the long ball, it eludes him. 
Eppner, the distributor on this occasion. Inside from Efren. back into play. Oh, Guinea Bissau, one can hardly blame them for that situation, I suppose. Looking up in the dignitaries' enclosure, we're nearly at the halfway stage of the first half. No goals yet between these two sides. They only scored one apiece when they met in their opening encounters. Mozambique against Zambia, Guinea-Bissau against Namibia. Ball knocked away by Guinea-Bissau in defence. And uh, Dominguez with some fair play. Ball with Vici now, and straight in towards Kempala. Kempala looking for some options. Dominguez is one of them. Thought he was going to go for goal directly. Was looking to. Just one of those great passes into the penalty area for teammates. That didn't come, and now there's a bit of a problem here for Mane, I think it is, who has been summoned by the match official, Sorry, Mane. Defensive forward by Geraldo, who immediately looks towards the referee for some support. Very much in vision for the coach of Mozambique. So an opportunity for the home side. Sanadin Junior looks as if he's going to take this one. Really wasted opportunity. Thirty-year-old Maritimo-based midfielder, and he's 47th international. niggle in the middle of the park there because uh, Mesa is in it once again then the smiles break out between the two players now it's just a challenge it was a bit of a, an elbow in the neck of the Guinea-Bissau player to be honest so once again a set piece for Guinea-Bissau so they seem to enjoy the proliferation of the ball and set pieces. It's what they can do with it. I think on that occasion, Mozambique with the clearance, nobody to pick up from a Guinea-Bissau perspective. And Kambala looking for the release. Tucked away by Pele. Now it's Abner once again. Abner and Suarez doing good work on the left-hand side for Guinea-Bissau. Click on from Kampala. Offside flag. It's going up against Guinea Bissau. So rather impressed with the work rate that has been perpetrated by the visiting side at the moment. Pick up from the right side of Kovac. Now, a deception from Guinea Bissau, and, and away they come. Unfortunately, the ball's been played through a little bit too strongly from Bacabalde. 
Bonne seems to be unhappy with the situation as well. Tony Plito and Mendy potentially are the recipients. Different goes to Misa. This is Geraldo. Misa once again. Zenedine Jr. Nice looking ball from Zenedine Jr. as well, but uh, Mozambique this time find himself offside with Luis on the left flank. The assistant referee might have just been a little behind play on that occasion because uh, it seemed to be at least the entire defensive line of Guinea-Bissau that was playing the left winger on for Mozambique and perhaps a missed opportunity for Luis. Won't stop him having another opportunity though. All played away by Edmondson Almeida, who's on the right hand side of defence for Guinea Bissau today. Efren Matola. Just look how high Guinea Bissau have the strikers playing, and any sort of missed opportunity to clear the ball from Mozambique could be passed upon by the visiting side. Such a wonderful atmosphere at the Zimpeto Stadium in Wuputo today. Late afternoon kickoff, Zim Kambala goes wide once again. Looking forward, Mielsen. Kambala. Haven't seen Dominguez for a little while. Witty with a tap down. And unhappy that the decision's gone against him. A little bit more than unhappy. Forward by Pele. This is Mendy. Cezinho trying to get into play as well. The captain of the side that's gone behind to the corner. Nielsen with a good job for Mozambique. Now just scooped away. By the Mozambique and Ed Milton. I think forthcoming as far as the attack is concerned, but there's still a bit of pressure being exerted by Almeida. He's a right sided fullback, but now he's suddenly on the left hand side, but he could drive a ball in from that position as he drifts across back to his normal slot, and he's out of position, he's going to have to. Hurry back there. Fortunately, cover's been provided by Tony Brito. Burugo with an easy pickup and Suarez asking questions for Guinea Bissau. Here's a, a player down for Mozambique. A little bit of a discussion between Misa and Tony Brito and Ifrain going across to the bench to have a chat to Abel Xavier while there's an injury taking place. I'm not as though the injury took place, and it didn't look as if Tony Brito caught Ed Milton a little late. In these warm, humid conditions, 84% humidity. Nildo warming up at the moment for Mozambique in case he is required. Nildo Mandava. So Nielsen goes off to receive a little bit of medical attention. Looks as if he's set to come back on almost immediately, though. And in the picture is Juari Suarez.
So the ball will be returned by Mendy all the way back to the Mozambican goalkeeper. No damage done, injury something of the past and play can continue. We will continue with Zainedine Junior. Big nil, Giri Bissau nil. Over half an hour played in Maputo. Pulled by Dominguez. Kambala was trying to uh, force the issue in a forward position for the Mumbas. looking to stretch his legs. He hasn't had an opportunity in the last little while, though. Give me sign number 13. Unfortunately for the fans, Dominguez has gone over the touchline. Knocks the ball away from Juari Suarez, and uh, the home supporters didn't like the, the interaction between the two players. It felt as if uh, Suarez had put his knees into the back of the Mozambican skipper. I think from the referee, from Mauritius, though. All of the officials today are from the holiday destination for many folk. Ellison Kasama for Guinea Bissau. They're going in the wrong direction from the visiting side. They are seemingly able to cut out the attacks from Mozambique quite easily, Guinea-Bissau. Then their battle continues on that left-hand side. Mozambique have the ball back with Luis, the left winger. Now Kambala. Ratifo. Well, since the little runs dried up from Dominguez, we spoke about it perhaps becoming a little bit predictable, and therefore the coaches changed the tactics just a little bit, and Dominguez playing a more supplier role. So since that, that has happened, the opportunities have dried up a little bit for Mozambique. Milton playing on the that pullback side for Mozambique has been dragged around a little by Tony Brito, who's the right winger for Guinea Bissau. And that's a little contest that's been continuing almost uh, from the start of this encounter. There's no doubt that it'll continue to the end. Luis trying to push possession back. This is Zezinho, the captain of uh, Guinea Bissau. No play through for Ebna, who's a, a 23 year old and on debut for Guinea Bissau today. Plays for Palermo in Italy. Caught again by Milton, and that's a delightful ball, and once again it's Dominguez looking for Ratifo, and the keeper was off his line maybe a bit late for his uh, defenders' likings, and they have to take responsibility and concede a corner. A little bit of work done by Luis, and looking to cause confusion in the centre of defence, but good uh, fight back by Guinea-Bissau. Not for the first time today, goalkeeper Mendez finds himself injured. There's a beacon bench with Lionel 
Renildo, Deo, Raul, Maninho, Chico, and Nene waiting for an opportunity to come on. And for the first time, it's Ifrin Matola who's come across to have a chat with coach Abel Javier. Alongside of him, Kampala. Mendes has been repaired. So, Dominguez. Abner with a miscue, worked away by Sorimane. Lots of yellow jerseys back in defence, and now the strong counter-attack from Guinea-Bissau. All turned over by Mozambique, though, inside the half of the visiting side, and Zanadine Jr. himself forced to seek a bit of refuge with Kampala. Witi. Milson. Witi tries to wrong foot Abner, falling towards Ratifo. Long range effort, there was a slight deflection, but uh, no problems for Jonas Mendes. A little bit of a curve on the ball that Jonas Mendes had to be watchful of all the while. Once again, it's Witi. to be taken by Ifrin Matola. And again in the background, Jevier. <laughs> seen him throughout the course of the first half, very animated indeed. Ball away by Ellison Kasama for Guinea-Bissau. They'll stay on the attack here will Mozambique. Desperate to get something on the scoreboard before half-time. Ratifo with the interception. It's been held off the ball. Uh, well, Ratifo... With his retaliation, he's blown for the foul. Can he be sound with a free kick? We'll get another with a foul from Witi. A little bit stop start at the moment as we head towards the 40th minute of the first half. Leaving uh, around about five and a half minutes to play before we have first half stoppage time. There's a big nil, Guinea Bissau nil. Not the goalkeeper's made a save of any great significance, to be honest. Way by Kampala for Mozambique, and now the charge will be on for Dominguez. He's got a bit of pace about him, the keeper comes out, and Dominguez read that rather nicely because he wasn't confused with the presence of Jonas Mendes. Looking to pick up possession, and that's a foul by Mozambique on Pelé. Perpetrator being Misa. Now just coming off the right shoulder, no attempt to play the ball at all. No complaints, surely. Hit a clear by Ifrin Matola. Just gets the sense that the play is starting to hot up a little bit before we get into the half-time break with both sides looking anxious to get themselves onto the score sheet. Nil-nil after 40 minutes and a couple of seconds. Away by Kampala. Strong challenge in the middle of the park. That's the damage or the lack of it so far. It is great interest to see what is happening as far as the Zambia matches concerned. I haven't had an update from them in a little while, but we found to get that as a final score.
match starting a little earlier than this one did. So it'll be interesting to see how the group ramifications pan out, even by a half-time in this encounter. There's a play from Guinea-Bissau that's down, and it doesn't look as if there was contact from a Mozambique in play, but Mozambique want to continue with Witi here. Witi being held off the ball by uh, Zuari Suarez. They want to take the uh, restart very quickly to the Mozambique, sensing that there's only three minutes to play before we get first half stoppage time. Strong challenge by Abna on Witi. A little bit of niggle at times, although the match hasn't been played in terribly to a humor, that's for sure. The free kick was taken in the wrong place. Witty was off. I fancy he might have been offside anyway. So to have the ball back is something of a bonus, in my opinion, for Dominguez and coach Abel Xavier. Goal now would be worth gold for the Mozambican side, just close to half time. Dominguez, toss the floated around the ball, the keeper stayed on his line and he's beaten! Fabulous stuff from Mozambique. I think Zenadine Jr. is trying to claim it. Wonderful ball over the top, the keeper came out, Jonas Mendes, stopped for a moment, made the initial save, the ball tucked through his legs into the net, Mozambique in front, and how crucial could that be in the final reckoning? The fans absolutely delighted, and uh, what a moment. For the number three, Zenadin Jr. This is how it came about. Plays around the back of the wall. That's clever stuff from Dominguez. There's the initial save from Mendes, and he backs away from it. And there is Zenadin Jr. to tap it into the back of the net. Bounce of the ball, awkward. Double move. The first header by Jr. Carried away by Mendes. Picks up the rebound. And Zenadin Jr. will take a bow for that one. Wonderful work done by Dominguez. Zedelin Jr. The double touch gets it past Jonas Mendes. Mozambique are in front. With only a matter of seconds to go before we have half time in Maputo. The fans loving it here. And why shouldn't they? Maybe Abel Xavier will have a chance to calm down a little, but uh, it's unlikely. If there was uh, an electric atmosphere before the match got underway, it certainly has pumped up a little bit. Zenadin Jr. then, two minutes before the break, puts Mozambique in front. The numbers have struck. We are in the final minutes of regulation time in the first half. Throw in from Suarez. Mozambique will want to continue playing on the front foot here, there's no doubt about that. Witi will touch inside from Abena. Abner was in a bit of space, and that ball should have gone through to him uh, a little bit quicker from Mendy, but it didn't. And there'll be a free kick for Mozambique, and there'll be no complaints. Tony Brito was playing down the right wing a bit earlier on, and has committed a few unfair challenges today. Again, just thrusting himself right at the Mozambican goal scorer, who no doubt will have a bit of a target on his back for the remainder of the game. Stoppage time in Maputo. Mozambique lead by a goal to nil. Misa. Zenedine Jr. Two minutes of time added on by Mr. Ahmad Hirlal. Dominguez loses out to Pele. Nice bit of skill from Pele. Ratifo is in close proximity. That looks like a handball. The referee had his back to it. Just look at the pacing in the foreground from Abel Xavier. If he can stuff a pair of boots onto the manager, he'll be on in a flash. Well, the niggle continues here. Geraldo in a spot of bother, and the animation gets uh, to another level. Geraldo talking to the fourth official about something. Zezinho, the captain of Guinea-Bissau, with that challenge from the number five of uh, Mozambique, who just ill-timed the challenge. Let's have a look at this again. Well, just comes in and clatters right into that ankle of Zezinho. Completely unnecessarily, because it looks as if Ratifa had things covered anyway. So 
Well, I can understand that Guinea Bissau would have some complaints, but you've got to leave these things up to the referee. So Zinho back on his feet. Important part of the Guinea Bissau setup, not only because he wears the captain's armband. Discussions continue between Tony Brito and Geraldo. And uh, Abel Xavier continues his animation on the touchline. And Guinea Bissau players asking for a little bit of calm before half time. Two minutes of stoppage time has uh, nearly elapsed, but because of that injury to Zezinho, we probably have another minute added on by referee Ahmad Hiralal. They will continue. We've seen some good attacks from the right hand side by Guinea Bissau so far in the match. Good bottling up there by Edmilson. So the two minutes of time added on has come and gone. The referee has his whistle in his mouth as well, but this is a good looking attack from Guinea Bissau. They can score an equaliser, but they won't in that sort of situation. A little chip in from Zezinho. There's a player offside anyway. Should be perhaps the final play of the first half, and there's no doubt that uh, Hirugo will uh, take his time about it. Restart from the Mozambican goalkeeper will bring it in to a first half that saw plenty of niggle and maybe on some occasions a little bit more than that. But it also brought the opening goal of the match with a free kick from Dominguez, who really put uh, the Guinea Bissau side under a lot of pressure in the early stages of the match. A variation to the free kick by Dominguez. Zenadin Jr., two bites of the cherry, gets it past Mendez, and Mozambique lead Guinea Bissau at half time by one goal to nil.